today we're gonna do all the touristy things in London and we're starting here at the British Museum so this is something I've always wanted to see everyone says you have to go to the British Museum there's so many artifacts here and it's completely free to get in you ready ready let's go that's the Rosetta Stone right there. We're trying to get to it. So the Rosetta Stone was so, so important of a find. Before this was found, no one could read the Ancient Egypt hieroglyphs. And this is basically a translation stone of Ancient Egypt into Greek, and I forget what other language. But um, that was very, very important. So we're in the Egypt area of the British Museum right now. These tablets right here, are from 1550 BC, okay? 3,000 years old. And look at the colors. So this tablet here is from 2025 BC, so we're getting older. And it's just fascinating because this is telling a story. This is telling about how this person went on a journey and he was, he participated in a festival and all of that is written here in this beautiful tablet of hieroglyphs. So here's the tablet and then down here is what's telling the story. I'm just fascinated that this statue is about 4,000 years old and there's nothing missing from it. It's in perfect condition, no cracks, no nothing. It's beautiful. The base has a, a little chip missing, but the statue itself is in perfect condition. 4,000 years old. That is pretty impressive. I wish they made cars and appliances and houses to last that long. That would be nice. So we toured the Egyptian Museum in Cairo a few years ago, and they said that they were petitioning the United Kingdom to return all of these artifacts. Well, after seeing these artifacts in the British Museum, I don't see that happening. Do you? I find this interesting. This box was placed in the Temple of Mamu, God of Dreams. The, these tablets represented here by plaster cast of the originals, which were 883 to 859 BC. They describe how he founded the temple, brought timber from Lebanon for its roof and the doors and decorated the doors with bronze. Wow. And this picture is a view of the excavation at Balawat in 1956 through 1957, looking into the shrine uh, of the Temple of Mamu. I think that's interesting. They used to keep journals on stone tablets. It's pretty amazing and very impressive. Just walls and walls and walls of ancient history. I'm out of my element. Elisa is just loving this and I'm interested as I'll get out just baffles the mind you know how old these things are and how long we've been here everything around us right here is almost 3,000 years old that's old y'all okay this looks familiar yep this is the Greek and Roman sculptures we're moving on to ancient Greece uh oh they're missing some giblets. So this piece right here is from Turkey. So we have been to um, Ephesus and it's a lot like this. A lot of the pieces were broken. There was an earthquake that went through there and crumbled a lot of things. So that's why they're not as put together as what you see in some of the other places. They did a really good job of putting it back together. So yeah, we went to um, Turkey and Greece back in, and Egypt back in 2019. So if you haven't seen those videos, go check those out. I personally think the craftsmanship just wasn't that good in Turkey because, you know, when we were in Turkey, I saw a lot of broken pieces. Earthquake, honey. Earthquake. You know, <laughs> blaming it on the earthquake. Really, really cool. These are all the gods and goddesses that were on the, the east side, or east pediment of the Parthenon. You can see it, it was part of the architecture and the design, and we were there, I've seen it in person, and to see this here in the museum here in London, it's pretty, pretty cool. That used to be over there in Greece, in Athens, on the Parthenon, that's, that's pretty neat. Are they replicas? 
Is it the real thing? Probably replicas. I bet these we're are trying to figure because I think the originals were still in Greece. They should be if they're not, but we don't know. If you know, leave a comment and let us know. What would be the point of that anyway? I thought museums were supposed to have the authentic, real pieces. They have replicas in museums? I told y'all this is not my element. I gotta tell you what, and Elisa can attest to this, but the ancient Greeks, these guys were in shape, man. Oh, they, yes. they had six packs, every one of them. And, and their asses, holy cow, the glutes. They worked hard, you can tell. Look at the size of this thing. This is from 700 BC. 700 BC, and it's still intact. It's a bathtub for a short fella right there. A real short fella. The people were very small back then, very, very short. There was a CAT scan done on this mummy. They did not open the mummy up because of the wrappings but this was 1300 BC. That's pretty fascinating. lost. We're trying to get out and it keeps bringing us into another, another section room. of the museum. And another room. This, this section looks like a giant library. But this section has air conditioning. But it has air conditioning. <laughs> We're trying to escape the museum and we can't get out. So we have left the British Museum for two reasons. Number one, it was hot up in there. Yes. There was no AC in most of the, built, most of the rooms. No. And number two, Westminster Abbey closes at 2 p.m. and we're gonna try and make it there. So we are like mad dashing, booking it across London to Westminster Abbey, which is a little over a mile walk. Yep. <laughs> the smell of fish and chips just permeates the air all over the city of London. I love it. You never really get sick of fish and chips. We've only had it once, but I know we're gonna have it probably one or two more times before we leave. The sign outside yesterday that we saw said 10 to 2, but it's actually open until 3.30. So we're here and we can take our time and really see it and enjoy it. So it's pricey to get in here. It's 25 pounds a person, but I have to see it. <laughs> so it's worth it. So you get a little audio tour guide. You can walk around and get a little bit of a guided tour.
Henry III. He's the one that built the modern day Abbey as we see it now, or started the building of it anyway in the 1200s. So we're in the tomb room of Queen Elizabeth I, and then back behind here is what they call the Innocence Corner. And up there in the center are the bones of the murdered princes. That's crazy. From They were killed in the Tower of London. Their bones were found there, and they've been moved here uh, to be in, entombed right here. Well, that's it for Westminster Abbey. We weren't supposed to record anything in there, but we snuck a little bit here and there but there was a lot to see that we couldn't really talk about in there. Um, the tombs were really neat to see. It, it's just ornate and beautiful. And just the fact that it's been built since the 1200s and it just keeps growing and you know altering and people keep getting buried here. And there's masses every single day here in this church and that's why they're about to shut down is because the mass is coming up soon. I am in London and I finally got my scotch. I've seen this so many times. I've always wanted to try it. Here I am. I'm doing it in real life. It's the real deal. All right, so it is an egg. And it is not completely, it's like soft boiled, like the texture, but it's deep fried. It's a deep fried egg. And look at the texture of that. All right, and then you got a little side of some like beans. But I'm gonna go right in. I don't know how the, you're supposed to eat this. I'm gonna eat it the way I would eat it. Let's just go right in. Mm. 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 What's it taste like? Like a fried egg would taste. It's, it, you really can't explain what that tastes like, but it's good. So there's like this yellow sauce in there. Not sure what that is. Kind of mustardy, sort of. Uh, but I'm not sure, but it's got that, that pungentness of like a mustard and the egg is cooked perfectly. The, the, the batter that it's fried in is super crispy. It's a perfect little bite. I'm super curious to try it now. Mm. Awesome. Jason made it sound so good, I have to try it. It's almost like cornbread. The batter is almost like cornbread, but very mustardy. It's different. It is good. Mm. Jason's gonna finish that off. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. We are here at Buckingham Palace, where the Queen resides. It's quite magnificent, isn't it? It is. So the flag is flying, which means the Queen is in residence here. Could you imagine how creepy it would be to look out your house and see all these people just standing outside your house? I wouldn't like that. I'm sure she's used to it. You know, she's been doing this for 50 years, but that would be strange. So next to Buckingham Palace is this park, and I went and looked at the sign. This is called Green Park, and you can tell it was planted on purpose to look like this because these trees are perfectly lined. They're very mature trees, so it was planted a long time ago. It's beautiful here. We're gonna walk through Green Park and cross the block and go to Hyde Park. So we are walking from Green Park to Hyde Park and we came across this. So this is the Wellington Arch and it was built in 1826 somewhere else and taken apart and moved here in 1882. That's crazy that they would tear apart something this big to move it. But here it is now. As soon as I find a pub, I'll be less miserable myself. <laughs> Isn't that right, darling? Yes, we will be. We are walking our asses off. We are. London have so much to see and you want to see it all, but, but my glutes are starting to feel numb. Elisa has resorted to ditching the wig. It's I had to take it off for a little while. I'll probably put it back on at some point, but it was so hot it had to come off. Real life stuff. Tra yep. Traveling's not always easy, you know. <laughs> we had to bring Jason to his happy place. He really needed his happy place. We, we went to the British Museum, then we went to Westminster Abbey, and then we got some lunch, and then we kind of were going down. And we're like, okay, Buckingham Palace. 
then we walked through the park. The plan was to go to a pub in that part of London and then go walk through Hyde Park. But the pub we went into, Jason was not feeling it at all. So he's like, let's go back to the area we were in this morning, which is Seven Dials. So that's where we're at. We are at Brewdog. I think that Brewdog in Seven Dials. Pineapple cider. Yes, my feet are smoking. Elisa's too. Both of our feet are hurting. But we have seen a lot, covered a lot of ground today. Like Elisa said, lots of museums, lots of churches, lots of parks, lots of walking. And we haven't worked it out where we've made frequent stop-offs enough to kind of keep the balance. You know, all work and no play makes for a dull boy, right? But uh, we are happy now because we're at the Brew Dog. And we are having a nice little pause for the cause and taking a load off of our feet. <laughs> we had a little Rose and Crown place over there, uh, Westminster area. It was uh, it was in the really stuffy parts of town, and when we walked in. It was very stuffy feeling, and so we were just like, so like, before we walked in, I actually dropped my glasses on the ground, and there was like three guys standing outside, and they, not one of them, I kept on walking, not one of them said, hey man, you dropped your glasses, where I'm from, you tell somebody, they drop something when they drop it, it's weird vibes over there, so we split, and uh, the cool side of town now. So far, 16,755 steps, and it is only 6.30, so there will be more steps, because we're about a mile from the hotel at least, and I think we're just going to stay in like the Seven Dials area for dinner tonight. Make a lot of stops. Stay off our feet. Yeah, it, but we do have to walk all the way back to the hotel, so... I'm thinking we'll top 18,000. Oh, we oh, yeah. But we'll top about 18,000 today. Yesterday was, let's see if I can go to yesterday. We walked a lot. 7.3 miles we walked yesterday. Guess what we just did? We're going to see the show tomorrow. So it's a two part show, three hours from one to uh, four, then you take an, a two hour break and then another two hour and 45 minutes. So almost six hours total. Totally, I've heard it's amazing. And we lucked up because of the train strikes, the tickets are less. So the tickets that we just got are normally 290 pounds a seat. And we got them for 160. There are cheaper seats, but they were all sold out. So this is what we got. We're sitting in like row H, 10 rows from the stage. Yes. Okay, pub number two is the Crown in Seven Dials. It's an area here in London. And I got a Session IPA and Lisa got the Apollo. Aspal, I think it was, yeah. Um, cider. And another pause for the cause. We left the brew dog, went and got Elisa's Harry Potter tickets. So now we're here just hanging out in Seven Dials area, which is a really cool, funky part of town. And we're going to see what all it has to offer after we drink this beer. Look at your glass. Very cool. Look at that glass. Beaver Town. It's a very fun glass. So we're standing at the center of Seven Dials, and the streets literally go off in seven different directions from the center point. Hence the name, Seven Dials.